This channel will now host more types of content in order to appeal to a wider audience. The following film contains graphic material that some viewers may find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. It's April 26, 1982, Yuyong County, South Korea. The man you see before you is a 27-year-old South Korean police officer. He has a girlfriend and he lives a very normal and conventional life. However, everything would change later that night when he was responsible for one of the most deadliest attacks in modern history. He was responsible for killing 56 people and injuring 35. His name is Woo Bum Kun. Wu had an argument with his girlfriend, Chun Mao Soon, on the afternoon of April 26, 1982. She had awoken him by swatting a fly on his chest. Enraged, he left the house and he went straight to the police station, where he then reported for duty at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. According to early reports, he began to drink heavily. Later that afternoon, at about 7.30 p.m., Wu returned home. He began to punch and kick his girlfriend. He then smashed the furniture before making his way to the reservist armory and he gathered an arsenal consisting of two M2 carbines, a large amount of ammunition, and several hand grenades. Some reports stated that other officers were at a meeting and he therefore managed to grab the weapons completely unnoticed. Some officers did mention that he had intimidated the guards to gain access. It got even worse later that night. At approximately 9.30 p.m., Wu had shot his first victim. 26-year-old Son Jun Tae had lost his life that night. He was standing outside the police station when he was killed in cold blood by Wu. Wu had entered the local post office where he had killed three more people. All three of them were phone operators. After that, Wu had cut off the telephone lines to prevent others from calling emergency services. Wu had next went to Turungani, where he threw a grenade and shot passerbyers in the marketplace. He killed a total of six people there, and he also wounded his girlfriend, Chun Malsoon, who had gone to investigate after hearing shots within the village. From that point on, Wu had proceeded from village to village taking advantage of his position as a police officer to gain entry into the houses and to shoot the people who lived there in cold blood. As his murderous rampage continues, at about 10.30pm, Wu took an 18-year-old by the name of Kim Ju Dong hostage. He ordered the boy to get him a soft drink from a grocery store that they stopped by. The store was owned by a 52-year-old man by the name of Shin Wei Du. After getting what he had asked for, Wu killed the boy in cold blood, then he attacked the store owner and his family. Shin Wei Du managed to escape after being shot in the leg. Unfortunately, his wife and his daughters suffered a much worse fate. They were killed in the action. Wu had continued his shooting at the marketplace, killing a total of 18 people in this village. Wu had visited the neighboring village by the name of Pyeongchang. He snuck into the house, and he murdered a family of four in their beds, and then he went to a house where there is a wake in progress. A wake, which is also known as a funeral reception, is an event where close friends and family of a deceased person gather together to pay their respects to their loved one. Therefore, as Wu made it to this house, the owner of the house saw the armed policeman and he asked him what had happened. Wu had explained to him that there was an alert, as North Korean Asians have been spotted in the area. The man had then invited Wu into the house for dinner. While they were eating dinner, one of the guests had made a comment towards Wu. They had said that his ammunition didn't look real. That set Wu off, and he immediately began shooting at the guests. He killed 12 people in that house. He made his way outside into the streets and he killed another eight, thus leaving a total death toll of 24 people in Pyeongchang. Police were alerted within minutes of the first shots being fired. It took them over an hour to gather a team of 37 officers to search for the gunman. 
The National Police Headquarters in Seoul were not informed until about 1.40 in the morning. At around that time, about two and a half miles away from the police station, Wu had found refuge in a small farmhouse, which belonged to a 68-year-old named Soon in Su, whom he told that he was chasing a communist infiltrator and that the family should gather within the main room of the house so he could protect them. When the family gathered at his request, Wu had held them hostage. A couple hours pass and the police eventually catch up with him. The forces begin to close in on the location. Then Wu detonated two grenades, which killed himself and three of the hostages. Mr. Su himself survived, but he was gravely injured. Four rounds of ammunition and one hand grenade were recovered by the police from inside the farmhouse. When this rampage finally ended, 55 people and Wu himself were dead. 36 others were wounded, six of them seriously injured. One of the injured, which was a child, had been shot. The child died on May 8th, bringing the death toll to a total of 56 people. At that time, 34 people were still being treated in hospitals. Chun Mao Soon, his girlfriend, later stated that her boyfriend Wu suffered from an inferiority complex and he had been bothered by villagers' comments on their living together unmarried. Later on, the provincial chief of police was suspended and four other officers were arrested for negligence of duty. I would like to thank everybody for listening. This was a very unfortunate event in history. May everyone involved rest in peace.